Looking to get in quick with somebody new? Well, shortcuts are almost always short-sighted, but if you must move things along, I can tell you it's easy. All you have to do is figure out which misconceptions are held by your mysterious new mate. Just the main misguiding forces will do, and then buoy that baloney up. You know, understand them, even if you have to misunderstand everyone else to do it. If you help a person pretend their illusions are true, they will let you, no matter what your qualifications. They'll keep letting you, too, so long as you're playing along. Isn't that the sad fate of so many entanglements? One person wants to play a new game of house with a different set of rules, different set of keys, maybe different players, locations, orientations, a different conceit, let's say. Yeah, if you concede the conceit somebody's alluded to, if you collude with them to conclude their illusions are true, they will let you. That is one sure secret to making friends. People need their illusions, as sure as the unformed chick needs his shell. Think about it. The whole point of his existence is to crack the thing. But without it, he'd ooze all over the place. Each new misguided certainty is a place to grow. You've got to live inside it. Until such time as breaking it all to bits seems a task of appropriate proportion to courage. No matter what, you've got to have a shell thick enough to protect you. Especially if you decide to stay inside it all your life like so many do. Of course you'll want one that'll give a good, satisfying shatter if you crack it. A thrilling transition. Now that is transcendent. Blow apart everything you know. To live without illusions might seem enlightened, sure, but I could tell you it's really a dark kind of lonely, an aimless, fluid isolation, like living in deep space, alone, with no hope of ever going home. You see, up there, untethered from whatever grew you and whatever fooled you, all your illusions, you'd have perspective. You could look back at our little blue dot with no blinders on. You'd have perspective in spades. But then you'd only have spades in solitaire. Not that solitary is always synonymous with lonely, it's just that the brightness of a blinder-free existence can be blinding. And more than blinding, crippling. Yours, up there, while truer than narrower views, is still only one lone little view in any way. Maybe it's only truer to you. For instance, if all you'll ever see are your, the walls of your own trench in wartime, does the big picture matter much, I wonder? Our spaceman is so separate from wartime, wartime, even as he surveys its effects splayed out below. Deforestations, colonizations, the twinkling city lights creeping like a slime mold over our surface. I mean, what is Vancouver to a mind in a vacuum? Science has said something interesting. Turns out, life's component parts are common. They're scattered in the trenches in the churches, on the hard, rocky planets, and free-floating in the vacuum. But in order for life to form, cosmically, that is, since we're up there, water is required. Not water, per se, but a liquid, an agent, some stuff for life's pieces to puzzle around in and meet each other, a, a mixer. We know about the parts. We don't know much about the meeting or the spark. Sound familiar? Point being, that in deep space, my tether might tie me to oxygen and disposal of waste, the essentials for maintaining my perspective, but not for expanding it or contracting it. After all, who's to say that expansion is always superior to contraction? No one who's ever been born, that's for sure. And moreover, no woman who's ever been on the other end of that beginning. Big babies are pains. So is the big picture. Point being, it's only collectively that we have anything true to say. Sure, at the far reaches, we may have something new to say, but new isn't true in any big picture way. Who's to say what's true anyway? That's the problem with big ideas. We're only so big. Our heart's only so capable of cold calculation. The soup of collective experience, after all, may be the only truth serum. If we're ever going to birth something like intelligence, maybe... Well, let's just say maybe there's no such thing as too many cooks, so long as none are stingy with their spices.